Hey everybody, my name is Julian. I'm an engineer with CAD Tools, and today we are here to talk about labels and how we can get the most out of our labels when we use the CAD Labels panel. So to get started, let's get that panel open. We're gonna do that by going to Window, CAD Tools, and then CAD Labels. With the panel open, wanted to quickly talk about the preview section up at the very top. So that is for those times when you would like to see what the changes you are making will look like on your artboard, but you don't necessarily already have a label on your artboard that you can manipulate or one that you are willing to manipulate. So since a picture is worth a thousand words, we can kind of go over what that means. If I change this Terminator style right here, you can see that the Terminator style is changing in the preview section, which would mean that the next label I draw will look exactly like that. As mentioned, you can always just click on a label that's on your artboard and you can see what those changes will look like by making the changes in the CAD label settings. And you'll see those changes reflected not only in your artboard, but of course in the preview section as well. Moving right along, we have the general section. The general section is maybe the broad strokes of what we can do with the labels panel. The, the first foremost and most important thing is this format section. The format section is what we are going to be using to put inside of the labels that we're drawing. So for instance, right now we are looking at this ABC incremental, which is none other than an alphabetically incrementing label system. Similarly, we also have the numerically incrementing labeling systems, like you can see down on this articulating arm down there and we have the ability to drop in custom text. So custom text allows you to basically put custom text in a label. I know it probably sounds pretty straightforward. You can see it illustrated here in a couple other places on this example art. We have the ability to drop in geometry things. We can get a little bit more into what that means, but in this particular case, we have the X and Y coordinates of where that label was originally drawn or pulled from. As I mentioned, you can customize what you'd like to see in that geometry category. For instance, if you'd like to see width, height, length, perimeter, or area, those are all things that can be individually selected and, and combine into whatever configurations you would like. We have the custom text. So right here, we um, that is the default value. So what that means is that when you draw a label, that is gonna be the value that is there by default, but it will give you the ability to type over it. Before I demo that, this is also right up here, the incrementing systems. This is where you can control how they're gonna roll over, where they go next, and so on and so forth. So as mentioned, kind of wanted to show you what the, uh, let's just go back here, what the custom text will look like when you draw a label. So we need to, of course, get to the right system here. And when we draw this label, You'll see that, as I mentioned, that is just a default value. You can either just hit escape, and then that is gonna be the value that is in that label. Or alternatively, when you draw that label, you can just type something over it, hit escape, and then that your label is drawn with the custom text inside of it. All right, so that takes us to color. Color is going to affect the entire label with the exception of the text. And we also have the option to detach. Detach in this particular case or in the labels panel just means that we are basically decoupling the label from all of the settings within the labels panel. So once you click detach, any changes you make while that label is selected will not affect that label at all. They will just only affect the next label that you draw. So it, it just decouples it and basically it turns it into almost its own piece of artwork. From there, we should talk about terminators. So we kind of, uh, we touched on that a little bit when we were going over the preview section. Starting from the top, however, we have the ability just to turn terminators off entirely. Once you turn them on, you can choose any one of these terminator styles. If you are choosing a style that includes a stroke, so for instance, we'll just look at this first arrow option here. We can choose a stroke weight right here, so we can change that to three. And you'll notice up there it got a little bit fatter to really make that easier to see. Maybe we change this to, uh, how about half of an inch, and you can see that the stroke weight is much more obvious now because the size of the terminator is also much more obvious. Can also change the angle at which we draw those terminators. And let's uh, get this back to a more reasonable default value. Okay, we talked about all that stuff. Text, the text category, 
does not require much of any explanation. It is just like any, uh, maybe the character panel in Native Illustrator. It is a font picker, font color, font size, and you do have access to things like text kerning and vertical spacing and the, the, the finer, more granular controls of text. Next thing to go over here is our leaders. So of course you can just turn the leaders off entirely. I suppose, you know, choose your own adventure, but that option is there for you. We have, so right now, I think everything on this artboard is just a straight leader style. We have the option to do a angled leader. We have a curved leader. We have this leader with this squiggly line in it. And then we also have this other squiggly line. However, the more technical use of this one is explicitly for patent designs. So if you are creating something wonderful for the rest of the world to use, make sure that that is the leader style you use because we put it there for you. And we can now talk about the border shapes. So I'm gonna turn stretch to fit off real quick. We will go over what that means here in just a moment, but we can turn the shapes off entirely so that your labels have no border. Once we turn the border shape on, you can choose between square, rounded rectangle. I should say this is a rectangle because it will uh, accommodate whatever size text you put in there. We have circular, triangular, hexagon, um, I guess diamond or square rotated, depending on how your brain works. And then we have this kind of like tag labeling style. On any of these, we have the option to change our border, I guess, padding or tightness. So you can see here, I can adjust how much padding we put around the text that is inside of your label. Stretch to fit is basically an ability to I guess maybe decrease that padding even a little bit more and make the border shape as form fitting as possible. So if we look up at our trusty grabber grabber label up here and we turn on stretch to fit, you'll notice that it becomes much more form fitting and that's kind of the best way to describe how stretch to fit works. So even though we are in a circular label style, it is going to constrain that circle down even more around whatever is inside of that label. We have the option to add a fill color. We're gonna need a better color than black there, but you can add fill color to all labels. Of course, you do have to have the border engaged. If you don't have the border, then of course you can't have a fill color inside of it. Last thing of note here is the ability to rotate the border in text. What that's going to do is that's going to, instead of having the label always be on the horizontal plane, it will redraw the label in line with the, with the label as it was drawn from the point of origin. So that's what that looks like. You can turn that back off and it goes back to the, the horizontal plane. All right, that is all we have to go over for labels today. Hopefully you learned something with what you can do to really leverage your labels and get the most out of them. Um, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.